Hi, I'm Chris Nessie from the House of EdTech podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. Ninth grade can be challenging. Let's experience it together. And here we are on the second day of the PNC Technology Conference here in the Poconos. And uh, we had another chance to have another special episode with uh, the keynote presenter on Tuesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, His name is Chris Singleton. Uh, He is a former pro athlete and an inspirational speaker, author, and entrepreneur whose message focuses on uh, unity in the community and trying to kind of take down uh, divides between different groups of people. Um, It was a really impactful conversation, and I had a chance to meet up with him after the keynote. Uh, We had a conversation about his own ninth grade experience um, and a lot of the different things that he talked about during his time. And uh, he has a really interesting backstory. Uh, His mother was actually killed in a church shooting in South Carolina in 2015. And that was kind of the motivation for him to become a motivational speaker. Uh, So Chris is actually touring around the country right now. This is one of his stops on like a 22 stop tour. So it's really an honor that he was able to take some time with us to kind of go through why he's doing what he's doing and the message that he has. So hopefully you're enjoying, you will enjoy this episode. Uh, lots of great tips and strategies on how to actually, you know, be yourself and to kind of foster your own identity as a ninth grade student or just as a high school student overall as well. Um, not included in this episode, but for our March uh, career month, I did get him to share a little bit about how he pursued a career in professional baseball as well, too. So those will be some tips for March as well. So if you want to go back and listen to any of the previous episodes of the podcast, you can go to ninthgradeexperience.com and search all those up. Uh, we're going to take pieces of this episode and cut them up and put them on TikTok. So you can follow us at Ninth Grade Experience there as well, too. So hopefully you have a chance to enjoy this episode with Chris Singleton, and um, hopefully you're inspired to go out and make some change in the world on this one. So welcome everybody to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. We have a special guest with us today. So uh, this is my second day here at the Pete and C Conference, and we had an amazing keynote speaker this morning who talked a lot about a lot of different things. Um, and he took some time. He was signing autographs and he has several books. So he took some time after doing that. So his name is Chris Singleton. He is a former pro athlete um, and a motivational speaker. And uh, he is on a February tour around the country right now, kind of talking in all these different spots. If you check out his Twitter account, um, you'll see where he's been. He's been a lot of places and he's probably leaving pretty soon. So thanks a lot, Chris, for taking some time out today to kind of talk with us and to talk with the kids here. Um, I know your message is to get out to kids. So um, today you were talking to teachers and administrators, but um, this will focus on a lot of kids stuff. So thanks a lot. Yeah, man. Grateful to be here. Excited to be on your podcast. This is really cool that you like had this ready to go. I love it. So yeah. So yesterday I recorded an episode here. So I had all the stuff in my bag and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bring this stuff up with me today again, just to see. Um, so I went up to Chris after he was done and he was signing books and he, uh, I just said, Hey, would you mind coming on? And here he is. So of course we have to ask him the first question that we ask all the guests that come on. So Chris talked a lot about his experiences uh, all throughout school, but didn't really hit on the ninth grade experience. So we have to ask Chris. So again, we always tell the adults, they never have to go back and mention the year because because sometimes we have some people that are a little bit older than you. Um, but if you can tell us a little bit about your ninth grade experience and kind of where that has led you today. Yes, absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of young, so I'm only 26. So I will say that it wasn't that long ago when I was in ninth grade. Um, but I do remember being in ninth grade, I had two teachers that were super impactful. Miss Bowden, first time I ever read a book from cover to cover and actually liked it was a book called Jim Candy. Ninth grade, Miss Bowden was my English teacher. Love that. My second thing that I remember about, about ninth grade was geometry. So I got a C in geometry. And at the time, an 85 was a B. Like an 84 was a C. I don't know what the grade scale is now, 
maybe it's changed a little bit. We ours goes uh, eighty to ninety would be a B in our school. Yeah, so I got unlucky because I got an eighty four in geometry, so I got to see my first C in my life, and so I was pretty upset about that. But um, yeah, so that happened, and then ninth grade as well I had my first real heartbreak. I would say I was dating this girl. I was a freshman in high school. I played basketball. She played basketball. My favorite movie is Love and Basketball. Okay. So I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we ended up not working out. And so it was my first, like, breakup. And uh, But it shaped me to be the man that I am today. Now I met my wife a couple years later in high school. So I'm glad we we did break up. So still, so still with the high school sweetheart, just not the ninth grade high school sweetheart. So yes. That's, that's okay. That's I don't – I forget how that story ended in Love and Basketball. But I don't – I. Do you remember how it ended? I forget how it's one of my that. favorite movies. Yeah. So he ends up getting hurt and she ends yeah. up playing in the WNBA. Yeah. She's the one that, that made it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, and it's interesting because we always talk to the guest about their ninth grade experience and kind of did that, that something that happened during that year kind of lead you in the path that you're on. So you were, um, you were drafted into major league baseball. So was there anything during that ninth grade year that, maybe set you up for that part of for that part of the journey obviously you're on a different journey now but what was it did you have anything going on in ninth grade that was like this is where I want to go with my life yeah so my freshman year high school was the first year that I actually could hit home runs like I never hit a home run before the summer of my eighth grade and so I played varsity in eighth grade I played varsity in ninth grade for baseball team and that was a year that I knew that, hey, I'm I'm pretty good. If I'm starting on varsity as an eighth grader and a ninth grader, and I'm doing really well in ninth grade, I got a chance to play in college. And so um, that's when I kind of told my mom I really wanted to play in college. We put together like a little plan of what I could do and who I needed to, you know, what my stats needed to be and stuff like that. And uh, that kind of got formed as I was a freshman in high school. So, yeah, definitely shaped that vision. And was there anything else that like during your ninth grade year, like now you're a, a, a motivational speaker and we'll talk about what kind of led you in that direction in a little bit, but was there anything during that time where you thought to yourself, like, could you have even envisioned yourself like out here, like today you're talking in about, we'll say about a thousand people. You know, if you look at your Twitter account, you're speaking to kids all over the country, thousands of kids. Was there anything in your ninth grade year that you could have even imagined that that's what you would be doing? Like playing baseball in front of, yeah. you know, 40,000 people might be a little bit different than standing in front of them with a microphone, just kind of talking to people. Completely different. Um, I do remember that my coach told me this. He said, Chris, when you're playing basketball and your teachers are watching you play basketball, like that is their game time when they're teaching, right? So your game times when they're watching you play ball, their game times when you're when they're in the classroom teaching and you're watching them. So don't be disrespectful. I remember that. I was in ninth grade when he told me that. So that kind of stuck with me like, man, I wouldn't want them, you know, acting crazy running in the half court <laughs> when I'm playing ball. So I can't be acting crazy while I'm in class in the ninth grade. Uh, but also when I finished my reading that book, Jim Candy, I finally started to read books by myself. And so now I'm an author and I'm finishing my first adult book. And I look back at Miss Bowden, who's a ninth grade teacher. And now it, it makes sense why I started to like books. And it all came from ninth grade. And what um, I'm not familiar with Jim Candy, but like, what is that like book about? And why is that the one that kind of finally got you to go cover to cover? Yeah. And I will, I, I've read books before, but not chapter books cover to cover. Before yeah. it was like Salt in His Shoes by Michael Jordan was a book that I love. Just little small children's books. But I love this book, Jim Candy, because it was a kid who was in, I think, high school who took steroids. He was like weak. He took steroids and like he had all these these emotions and he was going through stuff from taking steroids. And at the time, I'm in you know ninth grade. I'm puny. I'm, you know, weak. I'm <laughs> little. I'm just for, for, hit my first home run. And so, like, I didn't even know steroids were a thing. And I didn't use them, but just learning about all the side effects that came from steroids learning about all that kind of stuff was eye opening. Plus he was in a high school setting. I was in a high school setting. He was an athlete. I was an athlete. It just finally made sense why I was like, man, the stuff that he was going through in his life, I felt like, man, I could be going through the same exact thing. And so uh, I just saw myself in the main character. 
um, except for I was puny and he was massive, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's really interesting. Like, again, and, and we always come back to this, that like, there's a lot of times when, you know, when we have adults on and they always can kind of reach back to that ninth grade experience. Like, you know, we'd say like a lot of times, like mostly everybody graduates high school, but not everybody. But like when you get that ninth grade experience and like you have the baseball experience, you have this like reading experience. And like you said, now you're an author, you know, you're out here speaking. So these kind of things kind of all kind of tied together for you. One of the things you mentioned during your talk that I thought was really interesting, and and you talked about it being a generational curse breaker, and the person you highlighted for that was your basketball coach, which, you know, people might be thinking, well, I he played baseball, so why is the basketball coach important? But, you know, Coach Blake Hall was somebody you mentioned multiple times throughout your talk, and, you know, even, you know, to this day, you still call him up and reference him. So, you know, can you talk about that relationship that you built with that coach and, you know, for our high school athletes or for kids that are listening and like finding that one person in the high school setting that kind of can be the your your go to person? Yeah, Coach Coach Hall. Well, I didn't meet him until I was 16 years old. Um, so I was actually a junior when I met him, but I wish I would have had him all four years, man. It would have been phenomenal. So um, he talked about his alcoholic father and he was open about stuff like that. And up until this point in my life, I'd never seen a man like be vulnerable and share stuff and even cry in front of us and stuff. And so for him to do that and me struggling with my alcoholic father as well was a big piece of it. And I said, man, you know, I wanted to be just like this guy. He was awesome. He played professional sport. And so that was my goal. And just knowing all the stuff that he went through in his life kind of showed me, hey, Chris, even if we go through stuff, we don't have to say, woe is me. We can let that stuff motivate us to accomplish our dreams and our goals and our aspirations. And so he definitely did that for me. Um, and that's why I'm still close to him to this day. My son, you know, my son knows Coach Hall, <laughs> you know, so it's cool to see generations be impacted by his his, his leadership. Yeah. And it's, it's just, you know, we talk all the time about on the podcast about like finding your people and finding those like either trusted adults or like good friends that will kind of help you to kind of navigate the high school experience. So you found that kind of in your, your junior year, you said, so at about 16, um, you talked about too, like struggle moments and, and definitely things that kind of maybe, um, were impactful for you like and we're still kind of at the high school age you know trying to talk about that stuff you talked about and you know work when you had a job so you did work you know during high school you talked about working at chuck e cheese and you talked about an incident that you know may happen while you were at work and kind of changed a little bit you didn't go into a whole lot of detail with it during the the during the uh the presentation but you could definitely tell that whatever you know, we don't have to go into what was said, but like there was an incident that happened outside of your school that kind of changed and gave you a different outlook on, you know, things that you talked about in the rest of your talk today. So what what did that moment do for you as like a 16 year old high school student to kind of like give you a little clarity or kind of figure out like where you can kind of take the direction for being an agent for change? Yeah. And I think about, you know, e even my freshman year, there's certain people that you just, you just love and you aspire to be like, right. So one of my guys was Andrew McCutcheon. He's a baseball player who I absolutely loved, um, paid for the Pirates, and I want to be just like him, right? And another person I loved was, you know, at the time, President Barack Obama. And, you know, everybody's got their hero. And for somebody to talk bad about my hero, kind of put a bad taste in my mouth, right? And so even if we disagree with somebody or we don't like this person as an athlete or as a president or whatever, um, I think that that part kind of shifted me the wrong way because he's the first black president made me feel like I can be Superman. I can do anything I want to do. And so it, it definitely matters what we share. Our words definitely matter with people and they're hanging on to them. But also if I could look back and just say to myself, the people that I surrounded myself with, whether it's organically or whether it's intentionally, I need to first know I'd be confident in who I am. Cause when I was a freshman, even if I knew something was wrong and somebody that I knew said it and it, I was supposed to laugh, I probably was going to laugh at it just because it's like my friend or, you know, person that I'm cool with. But if I could go back in time and there are certain instances where it's like, man, Chris, you knew that was wrong. And that's not who you are as a person. You didn't say it, but you still laughed at it. And it kind of like just thinking about who I am today and the person that I am, the person I teach my kids to be. If it's not funny, don't laugh. Because you know how awkward it is if somebody says a joke about somebody that has special needs or somebody that's struggling with something and nobody around them laughs. It's so awkward. Nobody's, they're not going to say it anymore. And so looking back on my ninth grade experience, 
wasn't a I wasn't a bully or a bad kid, but there's certain times where I like laughed at people when it's like I shouldn't have because I knew it was wrong, you know? Yeah. And I think that's part of the growth. I think a lot of people kind of go through that, just trying to figure out how you fit in, you know, what is the right way to act or trying to figure out like, you know, you don't want to look bad in front of, you know, the varsity football team, or you don't want to look bad in front of these guys that are, you know, you're playing varsity. You said varsity baseball as an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're exposed to like kids that are five years older than you playing on the team like yeah. that's a huge difference in like age experience and you know you don't want to be the guy at, at ninth grade to kind of like be questioning people or saying like hey that's not right and it, you know that was i'm trying to think back to the time frame that you would have been in ninth grade so that would be like what 2000 are you in the 2000s in ninth grade yeah 2009 i think so we're kind of in the beginning stages of kind of, you know, people really being aware of like things that they're saying, like obviously people were, but you know, we're getting more heightened and, and senses with stuff like that now where it's like, you know, in 2009, the conversations were happening, but maybe not as freely as they are today. Yeah. Like, you know, you're trying to figure out how that best fits into, you know, where you're at and trying to fit in and do the things that you want to do. Yeah. And I, I think it's a good thing to, to fit in, but it's also a good thing to like, just be who you are. Right. The dopest thing to me is when somebody is just says, I don't have to be like this group. Or I don't have to be like that group. Cause I was a black baseball player. Right. Which is not like, not a ton of black baseball players on a team. And so I just be who I was. I, there was no form that I had to conform to. It's like, just be you, Chris. And so, um, everybody's rocking their spares. I'm still rocking my Jordans, you know? <laughs> so I just was, was who I was. And I'm proud that I, you know, stay true to who I, who I am. And unironically, I have Sperry's on right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, obviously part of your story and part of the presentation that you give is talking about, you know, what happened to your mom. Um, you know, your mom was involved in, in, in the shooting in South Carolina in 2015, which a lot of our students, you know, would be six, seven years old, like not even really aware of that happening. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you talked about that and a lot of the like things that happened on that day and, and things that, you know, obviously impact you for life when you're talking about that stuff. But I think the real message is like what that actually motivated you to do next. I don't know if that was like the actual turning point to now becoming the speaker that you are now. Yeah. But I think like you talked about like the struggle moments during your talk. And like, obviously, that is the most moment of struggle that you have, like trying to figure out why somebody would come into a church and, you know, just un like intentionally kill nine people. And one of them, like yeah. you said, you know, you never imagined that it happens to you until it happens to you. So like taking that moment and going forward, you know, not needing to recount all of those details, but how did that moment like kind of lead you into like what you're doing today with like going out there and talking about like unity and trying to yeah. overcome all these different hates and prejudices that we see going on. Yeah. I think for me, man, I, I wanted to be an athletic director. If I didn't make it to the big leagues in baseball, that was my goal. Play, play. If I don't play, be an athletic director in high school. That was like my goal. So uh, when I lost my mom, my, my whole attitude towards my life shifted. And so I said, well, what can I do with this pain that I've been given? And how can I help people or how can I stop these things from happening in the future? And everything shifted for me. And so that's why I'm doing the work that I am today. And it all stemmed from that. And sometimes we feel like our life is going to go this way and something happens to us. And, you know, we can still go this way, but we may be taking a different route. And that's what I feel like. I'm still impacting people. And in sports, because I speak to a lot of sports teams, professional college or whatever, but I'm taking a different route to do it. And so that's, that's kind of where it stemmed from for sure. Losing my mom. So when you, if you were to like, I know you talk to different levels of kids and, and, yeah. you know, if you were to talk to like, well, obviously you can do it right now, talking to like a ninth grade student about like, what can they do to kind of spread your message of like trying to like of unity and inclusion and like trying to find the common bonds between people, even though, you know, you talked about like one of the quotes that I really liked from your, your presentation was there's a story behind every stance. And I yeah. think that's really important, you know, especially like our school is pretty diverse. We have lots of different backgrounds. So like, what would your message be for a ninth grade student to kind of take what you go to all these different schools and like, how would you ask them to kind of go forward with Yeah. That? I think for ninth grade, it's, it's simple. So when you're in ninth grade, you don't even realize this, but 
there everything you mainly believe is because you were taught it, right? And so, like, think about your favorite sports team. When you're in ninth grade, why do you love that favorite sports team? Probably because you, your parents love that team or you live in that city. It's like, I'm taught to love this favorite sports team, right? Yeah. So then a kid from, you know, California comes from San Francisco. He's a huge Giants fan or whatever it may be. And it's like, well, why do you guys think differently? Because you were taught to be different. And I think in ninth grade, you meet somebody and their parents think differently or their parents vote differently or whatever it may be. And you automatically assume all these things about them or their family based on what we're taught when we forget, hey, this person is, was taught the same things from different people or taught different things from different people. So why would I automatically judge this person based on the things that they, they believe in? It doesn't make sense to me because we're taught it. And so I kind of share that with, with ninth graders and also remind them that we don't choose our skin color, don't choose our first language, don't choose where we're born, who we're born to. So we shouldn't judge people based on those things if we don't even choose them ourselves. We don't even choose our name. Think about it. Yeah. Like somebody gives us our name. But a lot of times, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, people get made fun of because their names or they have an accent and they think it's funny. But we don't choose that stuff. So I try to just remind people these things. And I think that's a great message for the ninth graders. And we'll kind of start tying it down here because you're, you know, giving a lot of your time here. So I appreciate it. I'm sure you're. I don't know if you're going to go into the water park. I don't think so, but you know, <laughs> we're still here. So um, you ended your presentation with a quote from Jackie Robinson, a life is not important except for the impact it has on other lives. And I think, you know, if that's one big message to take away from your talk is like you said, I want to be able, your big, big plan when you started this was I want to go talk in every school yeah. in the United States, which you quickly found out is insane. Uh, yeah. You know, we have in Pennsylvania, I think we have 500 school districts, not even to loan like how oh, many schools goodness. we have. So like, what would you say is like, you're kind of like the impact that you hope to leave and kind of when you go to like a school or you go to a conference like this, like what is the, what are you trying to leave behind? Yeah. I think at schools, it's like, there's one kid that hears a message that knows they shouldn't be laughing at stuff that they hear. That's going to stop because they don't know what somebody's going through at home. And hopefully after hearing my story, somebody can, people will say, you know what, man, I don't know what this person's fully got going on. And to me, it's a small thing to laugh at it, but I don't know. It could be huge to them. And, uh, other than that, man, the message of unity and reminding people that we don't choose our skin color, we don't choose where we're from, what we look like, or where we're born. After I share that message, I hope that they grasp it and share it with they, their friends. So those are the two main things that I try to teach. And uh, yeah, that's that's the mission, man. And I, I can't do it myself. So hopefully you guys in ninth grade, you guys can help me out for sure. So um Thanks a lot for taking the time to join us here. If you want to learn more about Chris, if you just go to his Twitter account, it's C Singleton underscore two, and we'll have it in the show notes. It's all spelled out. Is there anywhere else that, you know, you direct people to kind of check you out like website or anything? Man, like I'm that? everything. I got, you know, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, be real. You know about be real. I don't do it, but I know the kids do it. I got be real. Everything C Singleton underscore two. So I'm on everything. So thanks a lot for joining us. And, um, you know, if you have a chance, check out some of his message. Really great uh, message to kind of give to kids. So thanks a lot for joining us. Peace.